Western Australia's hard border will come down at 12.01 a.m. on Thursday, March 3rd, allowing triple-dose vaccinated arrivals from interstate to enter WA without quarantining. Key points. Quarantine-free travel to WA will be allowed for vaccinated travelers. Quarantine-free travel to WA will be allowed for vaccinated travelers. Social restrictions will be implemented to limit the spread of Omicron. Social restrictions will be implemented to limit the spread of Omicron. Case numbers are expected to peak at 10,000 a day by the end of March. International arrivals will also be allowed in if they meet the Commonwealth requirements to enter Australia and take a rapid antigen test within 12 hours of arrival and report any positive result. Premier Mark McGowan made the announcement as he conceded, the virus is already here and we cannot stop its spread, with the state set to reach a peak of 10,000 new cases a day by the end of March. March 3rd will be a step forward for Western Australia, a safe step forward, taken at the right time, in the right way, for the right reasons, Mr McGowan said. There comes a point where the border is redundant, because we'll already have the growth of cases here, having the border is no longer effective. He said the border controls were still necessary, while the state gets its vaccination levels up, but they would no longer be effective by March 3rd. WA is expected to reach a third dose vaccination rate of 70% on March 3rd. AP, Tartan Suflana. All interstate arrivals will be provided with a RAT. Unvaccinated returning Australians flying into Perth would be capped at 70 per week, and they would be required to undergo a week of quarantine in a hotel. In line with Commonwealth rules, unvaccinated international tourists will be banned. Premier unveils restrictions to limit spread. From 6 a.m. Monday, the indoor mask mandate is also set to be extended to apply to the entire state. At the same time, level one measures are due to come into effect for Perth, Peel, the Southwest, Great Southern, Wheatbelt and the Pilbara. Masks will still play a role to minimize the spread of COVID. Keen book. These include a two square meter capacity limit for venues including hospitality and entertainment venues, for example, bars, restaurants, cafes. Hospitality and entertainment venues, for example, bars, restaurants, cafes, cultural venues. Cultural venues, fitness venues. Fitness venues, hairdressers. Hairdressers, beauty services. Beauty services, places of worship. Forward facing seated entertainment venues, such as theatres and cinemas can have a 75% capacity, as can major stadiums. Nightclubs must follow the two square meter rule, but crowds are capped at 500 people. Crown Casino will be among venues subject to capacity limits. Andrew O'Connor. The casino will have seated service requirements on the gaming floor in addition to the two square meter rule. The Premier said these rules would be disappointing to some operators, but allowed major events live music and hospitality venues to keep operating safely. It's important to note that standing consumption is still allowed and dancing is still allowed, Mr McGowan said. The Premier said the government would work out what compensation would need to be provided to affected businesses. Meanwhile, home gatherings will be capped at 30 people and private outdoor events not at the home will be capped at 200 people. Restrictions can be stepped up the Premier also said people would not be required to work from home, but workplaces were encouraged to take COVID-safe measures. Mark McGowan also outlined Level 2 measures, which could be implemented at a later date if there were higher case numbers of the virus in the community. These would include the four-square-metre rule indoors, mask-wearing measures in schools four years three and above, working from home for vulnerable people, and home gatherings reduced to a total of 10 people he said. The Premier also revealed that, based on health advice, bottle shops would be removed from proof of vaccination requirements immediately. This is being done ahead of a review of other proof of vaccination and contact registration measures, given that we're entering the next phase of the pandemic, he said. Modelling predicts 10,000 cases a day. Health Minister Amber Jade Sanderson also revealed WA health modelling based on the Omicron variant. 
Amber Jade Sanderson says WA is set to record thousands of cases each day. Cass and Ho. The modeling suggests the state will reach a peak by the end of March of 10,000 new cases of COVID-19 each day. At the peak, 443 people are expected to be hospitalized in general hospital beds and another 53 people in intensive care. There are also expected to be four deaths per day during the peak. The total number of deaths is expected to reach between 134 and 146. I know this news will be confronting for many, as our successful management of the virus kept COVID out of our state for so long, Ms. Sanderson said. The health minister has promised to release the state government's Omicron modeling to the public early next week. She said the modeling would be complete by then, but there was already data available within it to make the decisions announced on Friday. Ms. Sanderson said the modeling suggested WA's hospital system, by making use of the private system too, would cope with the wave of Omicron cases. We are confident that our hospital system will cope, she said. It will be tough, it's going to be a hard time, I'm not going to dress it up. This is going to be really challenging for our community, because we have not seen high levels of COVID cases, but we do have the beds. CHO says modeling conservative. The chief health officer, Andy Robertson, said he anticipated WA may fare better than the modeling suggests. Andy Robertson sitting next to the health minister and police commissioner at Friday's announcement. Cass and Ho. We've given some figures today, but we believe they are actually probably conservative and that our numbers will be lower than that, he said. Dr. Robertson said the modeling was quite accurate though, as it was also based on data from WA's current outbreak so far. He also warned that all outbreaks generally have a longer tail on the other side of a peak. Dr. Robertson said vaccine mandates had worked and encouraged people to get their booster shot. We're not proposing to drop mandates for any group at this stage, he said. The state is expected to reach a 70% triple dose rate by March 3. From February 21, the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine will also be available at Kunana, Perth Convention Centre and Mirabuka for people aged over 18. It will become available in the Goldfields, the Pilbara and the Kimberley from February 28. But the Novavax is not yet approved to be used as a third dose. Premier will be in quarantine when the border opens. When the border comes down on March 3, any arrivals who are still in quarantine will be allowed out. That will include the Premier, who will have returned from Sydney, where he is required to give evidence in defamation proceedings with mining billionaire Clive Palmer. Mark McGowan will have to give evidence in the defamation case brought against him by Clive Palmer. Kimberly Bernard, but Mark McGowan has said he will remain in quarantine after the border opens and do a full seven days of isolation. It is a coincidence I am unable to avoid that I return from Sydney and I am in quarantine when the border comes down, he said. But I will be doing seven days of quarantine. I will be in a hotel room, working from a hotel room, doing a full seven days. Just so there can be no argument that somehow, by anyone, that somehow this was put in place to benefit myself. Mark McGowan was also asked how the public could trust the reopening date would not be changed again. This date is locked in, and I can't foresee a situation where it would change, he said. It's only 12 days away, it's a lot closer than last time. The Premier went on to explain that the arrival of Omicron had been an unexpected catastrophe. WA opens after two years of border controls. The announcement comes just one month after Mr McGowan delayed the border reopening, which had previously been set for February 5th. The initial border opening date was set on December 13, linked to Delta variant-based modelling and a prediction of high double-dose vaccination rates in WA. When announcing that date, Mr McGowan said it would be locked in barring some unforeseen emergency or catastrophe which we cannot predict. But on January 20, after the Omicron variant had led to cases, hospitalizations, and deaths skyrocketing interstate and overseas, Mr McGowan said the reopening would be delayed indefinitely.